Hello, everyone, and thanks to the International Network for the History of Hospitals for the opportunity we were given to present our studies. Thank you in particular to Anna Peterson for her kind collaboration. I'm Alessandra Klutzer. And I'm Mariangela Carlesse. We will tell you about the Ospedale Maggiore of Milan as a working machine, functions, spaces, and architecture through the centuries. The Ospedale Maggiore, fondly called the Cagranda by the Milanese people, is widely known for being one of the architectural archetypes for the modern hospital, and surely the most ambitious since its origin. The hospital has a centuries-long history, starting from the celebrated layout drawn by Filarete, almost preserved, despite the fact that it took more than three centuries to complete its construction, and despite the constant modifications caused by the changes in use, despite the tragedy of the World War II bombings, and despite the restoration site and the beginning of a new life for the complex, for the most part intended to be seat of the Università degli Studi of Milan. This monument, because of its history, its architectural features and its role for the community, encloses all the topics suggested for the conference. Among these topics, we can mention the relationship between the architectural design and use, a bijective relationship from Filarete's design to the present days, one affecting the other. In the hospital, healthcare had to live together with many other activities in a coexistence that might seem inappropriate today, but could guarantee self-sufficiency and made the hospital a model of efficiency. The hospital, as a model, both from an architectural point of view and as an institution because of its social role and because of its administrative organization. There's no need to stress the iconic power of the original plan designed by Filarete. Later, widespread through architectural treatises, guides to the city of Milan, travel journals, and so on. Also, the essential role of the donors, the three founders that made it possible to start and go on with the building up of the complex, the Duke Francesco Sforza, the wealthy merchant Giovan Pietro Carcano, and the notary Giuseppe Macchio, a still living tradition, that of the donors, portrayed in the valuable paintings collection of the hospital. During the two last decades, we have drawn our attention exactly towards some of these aspects. Our point of view is that of the architect working every day on site in building preservation, who must question the buildings in order to take care of them, considering the physical data as a product of all the issues given by the conference. That is to say, an unusual and not stereotyped reading of such an important monument through new observation lenses searching for data and clues in archived documents, and in the countless traces sedimented in the buildings themselves. It's not a selective look, a global approach that aims at knowing and preserving the materic integrity of a building, having the awareness that each datum might be a precious source for disciplinary fields, from archaeology to anthropology, from history of architecture to urban social, medicine and science history. This is the approach we have been following for almost 20 years, working on preliminary studies, surveys and diagnostic campaigns on the ancient chapter halls and on the Annunciata Church, among the places that still belong to the Ospedale Maggiore and preserve their original role and use classification. Working with our students of the Polytechnic of Milan, and, as we will see, designing the intervention for the reuse and preservation of the crypt below the church itself. The Ospedale Maggiore is widely known for having been an absolute typological model because of its rigorous plan, and this is why most of the architectural studies on the hospital have been focused on its typological and geometric and formal aspects. The preservation of the Filaretes scheme and the will of keeping a formal coherence in the whole complex 
have led to perceive an overall unity that has no correspondence with the true construction history, lasted more than three centuries. This is also why most of the post-war interventions have aimed at rediscovering the witnesses of the alleged original building. On the contrary, we have chosen to study the complexity of the hospital, focusing on the relationship between the changes in the specific use of its countless various places and each single modification in its structures. The specific way of studying the building have clearly shown that the whole history of the hospital is characterized by a sort of dichotomy, the grand image widespread through many engravings and the true everyday life inside the hospital. This is clearly shown by the opposite features of the two sides, the monumental facade along the ancient Via dell'Ospedale, looking towards the heart of the old city center, and the disemogeneous, confused backside along the fossa interna, the artificial channel that embraced the ancient city center yet among the most picturesque view of Milan. Ambrogio Annoni, who was the first to study the hospital from the point of view of the architect, gave a perfectly matching definition of the complex as a working machine, a multifunctional building in which the extremely clear layout was designed from the beginning to answer a variety of functional issues as the detailed description by Filarete clearly shows, and was capable of adapting itself to the always changing needs according to the space availability during the different phases of its building up, to the requirements related to the clinical progress, and to the always increasing need of new spaces, finding room in the attics, creating new floors, closing the arcades of the porches, and so on. This extremely interesting painting is a sort of snapshot of the main 17th century courtyard, with its countless characters who tell us about the many activities inside the hospital and the wide social hierarchy. From the wet nurses to the noblemen, from the apothecary to the beggars, to the priest leading the funeral procession, from the cellars to the number of children animating the scene. The coexistence of many functions is confirmed by the archive documents, crossing the data given by the inventories and the historic floor plans, it was possible to reconstruct the hospital detail layout, identifying for the first time the use classification of each single place at different stages. The offices for the notary, for the engineer, for the surgery, the places for all sorts of ill people, the scabby sufferers, the delirious women, the travailing women, the suckling children, the laundry quarter, the mill, the bath, the apothecary, the official herbs garden, the woodshed, the ice house, the church, the cemetery, the archive, the treasury, and so on. All these can be easily done for the ground floor, whereas there is no complete historic plan of the underground level and there are few plans of the upper floors. Yet, the underground level was essential in the functional organization of the complex, hosting essential places and paths related to the everyday activities, not specifically related to the medical care. As already said, we know that the attics were used and new floors added, but there is no evidence of these structures apart from the historical photographs, structures later destroyed by the bombings or pulled down during the restoration site, that was focusing on the formal aspects rather than on the functional ones. A layout that gets more and more rich and complicated through time and quickly changes until the brutal disbanding caused by war and the puristic, although extremely cultivated post-war interventions designed by the most known architects of the time, from Annoni to Piero Portaluppi and Liliana Grassi. Among the many examples that our studies have highlighted about the crucial importance of the functional aspects in understanding the architecture of the hospital, we would refer to a part of the hospital, built in the first half of the 17th century, 
but still astoundingly preserves its old features and recall to opposite aspects of the life inside the hospital. The most representative places, the chapter halls and the Annunciata Church, and the most hidden and humble ones, yet related to a crucial aspect in the management of the hospital, the burial site of many who could not recover, the crypt and the sepulchres underneath the church. The need of taking care of these places, almost forgotten for decades and brutalized by an unaware usage, has disclosed to us an unexpected and extremely interesting issues related to the lesser-known history of the hospital. We have therefore started doing researches on the topic of a burial management, rituals and sites inside the hospital starting from the words of Filarete, describing the sepulchres that were meant to be built next to the church until the end of the 17th century, when a new cemetery was first built outside the complex, San Michele ai Nuovi Sepolcri. The research has highlighted the complexity of this aspect related to different issues, the health issue of a corpse's decomposition, the difficulty of establishing the actual death having a place to lay the corpses for a certain amount of time, the religious beliefs and rituals, and the medical researches on the corpses and the building on the anatomical features. Because of its complexity and because of the growth of the hospital and the increasing number of deaths, the burial sites inside the hospital were various through time, and we actually trace their displacement on the plan of the complex. It was such an important issue that a very peculiar and clever constructive solution was developed, following the description given by Filarete himself of this sort of pits placed at the ground of the sepulchres, in order to allow the runoff of the decomposition products. The archive research has proved to be essential for the knowledge of the original layout of the crypt, built as a space totally independent from the church, being part of a perfectly organized net of paths at the underground level, related to the most functional places in the everyday life inside the hospital, mainly located on the side of the complex towards the Fossa Interna. What we see now is the result of a reorganization and redecoration of the central part of the crypt, therefore separated from enjoying the places, celebrating the 1848 fightings, meant to free Milan from the Austrians. Moreover, the documents describe the very refined and precious original decorative layout on the iconographic subjects related to death, such as skeletons, skulls, torfeidos, and so on. Painted by Paolo Antonio de Maestri, also known as Volpino, the same artist who was appointed for the decoration of the most representative place of the hospital, the monumental summer chapter hall. After a throughout and multidisciplinary diagnostic campaign, the conservation intervention done in 2011-2013 has aimed at preserving the complex and the stratified identity of these places, without selecting a specific phase of its history and without erasing the various signs produced by the long use and the intervention undertaken through time together with the evidence of brutal interventions, such as the net of fittings that cross the places and the effects of decay caused by neglect. The aim was to preserve the witnesses of the suffering of these places and of those who are still buried in the sepulchres, assuring through minimal interventions the durability and the opportunity of fruition of these places so meaningful for the Milanese history and people. So thanks for watching our video and we hope you found it interesting.